Hi, Mel. Hi, Mel. He's a grader. There you go. All right, I'd like Delayed. to uh, call this meeting to order and start with the pledge. Or do we have to do roll first? I'm sorry, it's been so long. You can do that. Okay. Mr. Mayor, you want to? Sure. The honor is yours. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Here, Jess, would you call roll, please? Yeah. Lee? Here. Hayes? Here. Picken? Present. It did say roll before the pledge. It's call to order, pledge, and then roll. We're, we're good. <laughs> Sorry, BJ. <laughs> we've, you have to keep me in line. We've done all the organizational stuff we need to do to start the meeting. So I am absolutely good. sleep deprived. So. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> Should have had some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a good thing. Find a good place. Um, all right, I'll go ahead and start off. Um, it's been a while since we've we've had a buildings and grounds meeting. Um, I, what I'd l personally, um, in my opinion, like to do, um, if we can all kind of come together on it, is uh, discuss town hall. And uh, I know that we've we've talked about um, needing to get figured out exactly what we want to do there and I believe um, I'll let you step in here in a minute BJ I believe the next step is to start getting prices and nailing down exactly what we need to do um, and I know that needs to be in next year's budget just because the police station will be done and that will be vacated um, I kind of have uh, some ideas in my my brain but why don't you go ahead and pop in here if you'd like sure um, one thing, Tommy and I had a chance to talk about this, and, you know, we're about a year away from having to um, budget money to um, start modifying the police, the current police station, Old Town Hall, to what we want it to be. First thing we need to do is decide what do we want it to be. I know there's been discussions about, you know, doing a banquet facility that could be catered in in the basement. Um, also doing um, office space on the main floor and moving some city offices over there. Um, you know, it's, 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 I, I hate to say it's not an urgent matter because I think it is because we certainly have to get moving on it and see what we need to do. But, you know, I anticipate with the 2018 budget, there's going to be money budgeted in there for construction of the old town hall. Right now, we don't know what that is. Right. Um, there's a lot of, you know, if you look at the main floor of the PD, even the booking area, there's a lot of um, drywall walls that have been put up to um, cut that place up and make different offices. My idea, um, what I've been thinking, is open it up, open up the back area, the booking area. That could potentially become some sort of storage area. Um, if you look at the conference room currently in the police station, you've got it bro uh, broken up by conference room. And then to the west is the deputy chief's office. That's going to have to remain an office because there's a structural wall there that's uh, made out of concrete. You can't move that. But the one that goes in the sergeant's office, um, you could certainly remove in a matter of minutes because it's just drywall and that would make that conference room bigger would provide additional conference space there's different um, offices that could be done in there um, if we start talking about uh, moving city uh, city offices over there whether it's planning and zoning whether it's utility we still have to have some sort of ada compliance uh, we have a lot of people that come in to um, planning and zoning and a good example is for yard sale permits i've seen a lot of people come in for yard sale permits who are elderly use the elevator to get up there uh, so we'd need to uh, take a look at that. Um, also with utility billing, the majority of the people that I've seen that come in to pay their bill are elder elderly. So if we're going to make that utility billing, we either have to do some sort of drive through facility, I think, that would allow them to stay in their car to pay their bill or have some sort of ADA compliance. The point we're at, though, is certainly, and I know there's been motions passed about talking about talking to architects, see what we need to do. I think we certainly need to go ahead and say, hey, let's take a look to see, first of all, what would need to be done to modify that building and, you know, say, hey, if we wanted to, and, and the way I see it is coming up with different scenarios and looking at the building as a whole. You know, if we want to do a banquet facility in the basement, um, does that include a kitchen or does it not include a kitchen? Is it just facility? Is it just catering in? Is it not catering in? Do the kitchen. How do you do that with ADA compliance? Does it have to be ADA compliant in order to do that? Do you put a lift in the front stairwell to get people down there? Where are the restroom facilities for it? 
Um, so there are a lot of questions with that building. If we do make it city offices on the main floor, we still have the issue is um, after hours, if it's on a Saturday evening and somebody's in the banquet, are they going to have access to the main floor to use the bathroom facility? So we have a lot of questions, and I think we truly need an expert at this point to take a look and start saying, hey, if this is what you guys want to do as far as, you know, person flow in there, office space, what can we do in there? What are structural walls? What aren't structural walls? What can we remove? What can't we remove? Uh, what needs done potentially with electric upgrades? What doesn't need done with electric upgrades for the stuff we need to do? So I think the time has come to be able to do that. Um, 2018, certainly there's going to be budget, bu money in the 2018 budget to modify because we're going to have the police potentially, hopefully, moving into their new station in um, first quarter, early second quarter of 2018. Yeah, and those are great points. Um, I guess not to get too far into the weeds as far as you know, what what to do with it because that's what we're anticipating hiring somebody to do. But uh, just in my opinion, I think that you already have the second floor occupied with the Sterling, Sterling Theater. Mm -hmm. But the first made. floor... The first floor and the second floor, we've got to be able to justify to the public that we're spending wisely their their money, and especially when we have needs such as Boca Meadow or whatever roads that need done. So um, my thought is is um, is utilities because you know that's double income for us. We can sell that. Uh, they pay the rent, they pay rent, and we would also get this opened up here for income rent here. So that's Fantastic. income, yeah. that's double shows. income for the city. And then also, like, like this evening, the mayor did a wedding in Sterling Theater. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an all-in-one one, one stop, um, and they could rent out the basement. Whether it has a kitchen or not, that's, like I said, getting into the weeds. But I think we have to make sure that we're able to justify us spending the money that it's going to take. And I think that we, in my opinion, could if we're making income off of both the first second or i'm sorry the basement and the first floor um i don't obviously the stirring theater is what it is uh -huh. it's a great thing um but i i really think we need to make sure we can justify spending taxpayer money on that and i think we can yeah a um, couple of points oh go ahead go ahead Tim. well I, look <clears throat> I, I i think those points are worth taking i think where i am with this is um it what it, what is the oh, when you almost think of the, what we did with the police station, you know what is the timeline and what is the milestone line and ultimately what comes out of our committee? Should we be because uh, council is going to have to make the, that determination? Right. Of course, uh, do we owe it to council to give them three choices, kind of a thing? We or do we do you know how how is that going to be and when do we need to almost plan backwards from? that 2018 budget process to, to have come up with, let's theoretically blow out every wall that can be blown out. Now, do we even want to do that? But you know, if, it, it, to, to start with a blank slate and then put up walls, this is, what it would, this is the walls we would need if the utility committee was going to go there. These are the walls we would need if it was going to house park and recreation. Or, and I'm making stuff up totally off the top of my head. I don't know that anybody's even thinking about that. But these are the walls that we would, or, or no matter what, we would need to put in bathrooms. And so at some point along that line, be ready to tell council that we've talked about this on numerous occasions. Somebody has done some basic work with it. And these are the things that maybe there's three, maybe there's four, I don't know. Maybe there's two that just say these are what the Building and Grounds Committee has discussed. What does council think about these ideas? And so we're, it's almost like there's no timeline in my, in my brain only. And so I, I don't know if that's something that we can work towards. Well, yeah, and I, I think that's a great point. My, I agree. I think that to get to that timeline – we have to – I envision this, and please correct me if I'm wrong, kind of like our meeting back in March when we made the recommendation to council to proceed, that we were ready to proceed into the police station. I envision, I see this as the same as we're recommending to council because we can't make those decisions or let council make those decisions without making a recommendation for him 
to to move forward and actually finding out what we can do and what it's going to cost. Is that am I thinking right there? You are. Yeah. A couple points I want to make. First of all, with the options, you're right. You know, I can certainly sit here and talk about moving utilities there, moving planning and zoning there, but I have no idea what that would cost to do. Right. You know, if we talk about making the basement, uh, which may need some significant work, um, a, a banquet facility. Well, that also includes buying the furniture to make it a banquet facility. So we got to start looking at um, total cost with this and looking at options. Um, and we need an expert to do that, similar like we did with the police station. Second thing I want to say, um, a point you made, Tommy, is as far as rent of the utility department. You know, the utility department paid rent in this building for many years, up until late last year, early this year. Oh, so that's um, the case. Okay. I don't feel that it is prudent and um, a good idea to charge a city department, even though they're funded separately, to occupy a city facility. I think it makes sense for them to be in there. Uh, the utility department is not flush with cash by any means. Um, so I wouldn't look at it necessarily as a revenue source, but the revenue source could potentially be the rental of the banquet facility in the, in the basement. And maybe we start charging some sort of rental for the Sterling Theater for things such as weddings or such as whatever. Well, it's um, still a revenue source it is. By, the, by them vacating even if they're yeah, not this paying would be a to rental. be there, yeah. it's a re revenue source because they're va vacating yeah. this building uh, opens up. No doubt. We increase our revenue by this, and that's a great office facility in there. As a kitchen, has large offices. So, yeah, we'd be able to pick up additional revenue by them moving out of here. I would argue if, if we are going to move a city department, the utilities one should we should focus on. Um, I think that the development committee – or the development department, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's important to keep them in this building only because the – um, the, the cooperation and the partnership they have meeting with developers, having the, the um, public services director there, potentially I'm there. Um, you know, Nate could be there at times, but it's easier for him to travel than everybody else to travel someplace else. So um, my focus, and again, we need to look at options, but um, my focus would be looking to see how to move the utilities department there, utilities building department there. This is how you used to be having I liked what you said about, I don't know who said it, about Parks and Rec. That was just an idea you kind of threw out there. I think that makes it very obtainable. Like people, if they're going to be walking in for utilities or zoning, I mean, I liked that idea that it would be um, accessible to the public. The other thing I'm thinking is what type of storage is the city in need of? Do we have files, things like that? Are we paying for storage someplace else? Or is uh, it just housed here? It's housed here. We're not currently paying for storage. Um, it's housed here, and I know the police department has a need for storage. We have a, ver a, a real need for storage, and that's why I'd like to take a look at potentially that uh, back what is currently the booking area to potentially serve as a citywide storage area where we could have stuff organized and okay. filed in there. I just didn't know if you were paying out for storage no. because I know at our law office that we're paying a storage fee, and so it makes more sense to have our own building because then you're saving money. So um, the other thing I had was um, we would, once we decide what we like, you know, what we're thinking about in the basement, obviously, like what you said, we would have to come up with the cost analysis of what the furniture, and do we hire a custodian that's going to clean up after people that rent it? Is there, are we looking at a, you know, someone over there that's, an employee that manages the, the property. Um, and I don't know if that's someone that's already here in the evening. And they, I don't know. Is that a salary? Um, we'd certainly have to do a couple things. We'd have to have somebody that manages the rentals. And we currently do that for shelter facilities. But we would also need to have somebody, and maybe it is a cleaning company, and maybe that's part of the rental fee, right. is to have oh, somebody yeah. come in and clean up after they're done um, and have a company Like a rental in. on a vacation spot where they yes. just come in and they clean up. Yep. So there's, you know, w those are the details we got to start looking at okay. with this, and I think that's where we begin. If if that's the direction we want to go, it helps us set what the rental fee would be okay. for it to cover the cost and also have some revenue for it. All right, thank you. <clears throat> I would, oh, sorry. I, okay, I wanted to say one thing. <clears throat> I was kicking Parks and Rec out uh, off the top of my head. There is something to be said about the logic of having the utility committee, utility department there, because that is the center of the people that they service, mm -hmm. whereas Parks and Recreation, ideally, will be citywide. 
and it, it's right. easy to think of that as being an accessible place, but it is for the village. So that's that's one thing I would I would say. Um, and uh, the other thought died of loneliness. So I'll, uh, I'll see if I remember it. The other thing I would say is that the potential to get another um, conference room by modifying the current conference room over there would be valuable. Right now we have one conference room for the city to hold meetings in, and sometimes it's it's double booked. We ran into that today with trying to schedule union negotiations where one union had it booked for their meeting and we were trying to schedule with something else. So having an additional conference room would be helpful as well. I, I do remember what it was, and that is I don't know how much this has happened it may have been happening the whole time, but the historic town hall preservation committee is that, is that correctly stated is, is in existence, and I would not uh, would hope that as we as we make our determinations or discussions that that they're included. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. And and as a member of that group, um, we do want to be included, and and I want you to know too that we also have. You know, part of our deal with the city is to uh, put money back into that theater. So when we're not buying curtains and, and lights and, and doing things, we could also be part of, let's say, the building needed, let's just say for giggles, painted. We could help with that also, offset the, and make sure that the or building Or we create some type of itself. a fund right. where it goes in and we pull from, I mean, even if, I'm just well, saying some type of a fund that's well, created. Well, we're, we're required to keep investing into that building right. and not just, you know, be a freebie. So, And we have as far as the theater goes, but we can also invest when it comes time to doing other stuff. Right. It doesn't have to be just theater stuff. It could be building maintenance. It could be bathroom fund. Yes, ma'am. Elevator fund. Mm hmm Well, there's already an elevator fund um, started. So hmm. when that day comes, there's not a lot in there, but there's an elevator fund that's been started. Keep adding to it. Yep. Does any um, does anybody have anything else? If not, I'm going to proceed with making a recommendation for us to vote on. No. We need to go with it. I'm good. I'm good at uh, on that subject. I'm done. Good. Okay. So um, before we actually call the vote, I want to make sure that my language is right here. So I was going to make a recommend, and if it's good, you can go with it. <laughs> I'm going to make a recommendation to council to direct um, our city administrator to um, begin speaking to, or should I put approve funding? Which one should I use? What if you can? Where are you headed? Funding to begin. I don't. I would say remodel of old town hall. What I'd recommend is um, authorize city administrator to get cost estimates. Is that uh, where from, you go with it? From okay. All right. um, design architects for uh, coming up with ideas for, you know, options for the old town hall reuse. Okay, that sounds better. And then ultimately, um, I assume that that will have to come back to council for authorization for a contract right. to do that. Would it come back to us first? Um, yes. Okay. As long as it exceeds $10,000, okay. but... I'd probably bring it to buildings and grounds even if it was under. Okay. Thank you for helping me wade through that there. I wasn't sure exactly where to go with that. Um, do I need to reread that? We good? Okay. So I will call for second. Second. I'll second, second that. Those are all? Yes. Please. <coughs> Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? <coughs> yes. I was rusty on that. I'm sorry. It's been a while. You're tired. You're tired, yeah. Been a while. Been a while. Um, is this... Did you have an update on... I do. There's various things I want to provide updates on, buildings and grounds okay. related. It's not going to take much time. Um, the first thing I want to talk about was the audio, or not audio, video improvements here in um, <coughs> City Council Chambers. Um, I know we talked about the audio improvements City Council Chambers and working with uh, the Mayor's Court to try to fund some of those out of the Mayor's Court Fund. 
Um, we have the PO issued, and Jess actually has taken over this project. She's running with it, and we're going to be installing uh, monitors, and we've got to call them monitors in order to pay for them out of the Mayor's Court Fund. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jess, but there will be a monitor on each side of the room that will be on an arm that's be able to be swiveled. Um, audio will be tied into the speakers that we have here. There will be a computer hidden in um, either back there in something or in the current case that people will be able to play from a flash drive or whatever presentations on. So um, I'd anticipate either by the end of this year, early next year, for all that work to be done and all the wiring to be done. She's also working on quotes um, for audio improvements here in the council chambers um, to clean everything up. So we'll be issuing the purchase order for that hopefully here within the next couple of weeks, and we'll see those improvements done as well um, coming up. Uh, the theater AC, I know that's something that's been a long um, hauled. Uh, Rachel Bissett and I have had an opportunity to meet a couple times with the design engineer for the theater HVAC. We should be getting the cost estimate from them very soon, which time design will begin. The goal is to have it done by the end of May, so the summer season, um, it'll be good um, to go. We're looking at potentially putting the unit on the back side of the building, so it's hidden kind of back where the current um, generator is running some duct work. We may have to run another electrical service because the electrical service that is there is probably not going to be sufficient to operate um, that. But that is something that we'll probably see going out to bid hopefully by the end of January, um, early February with construction then beginning uh, late winter. And um, it's not going to be a, it's, it's a very um, involved installation considering it's just the one space. They're also looking at zoning it where if you don't have a full house, you may be able to uh, cool the front end of the theater. If you do have a full house, you'll be able to um, cool the entire thing. So that is progressing. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is the property that the city owns. Um, I would like to, and we've been approached actually by a gentleman who owns property that's adjacent to a property we own in the Blanche Edition on um, Connors Avenue. And it is landlocked, has properties in front of it. Um, he owns the one that's adjacent to it, but also connects. It's about four acres, and he said, hey, what do I have to do to buy that? What I would like to do is um, come up with a process, talking to Mr. that's how we dispose of properties like that. You know, if we have properties in the Blanche Edition. We have one on uh, Mink Street that's unbuildable that we have to maintain, and we're paying taxes on all of these. We try to get them exempt, but every time we try to get them exempt, the school districts say, you know, they fight it because they want the taxes on it, rightfully so. Um, so we're paying taxes on these that are properties that aren't going to be used by the city that I foresee in the coming future. Um, so I'll be working with Mr. Zetz to see what the process is for disposition of city property. It's prop my guess it's going to be an auction, um, as we do with everything else. But um, I'm interested in doing that. We own maybe eight different properties that aren't all adjacent to each other or connected to each other in the Blanche Edition. There are different lots here, there, and everywhere. may help lead to some redevelopment down there. Um, adjacent property owners may be interested, but just taking a stock of all the properties we have and um, start to potentially try to sell those, knowing that there's stuff that we probably won't be using in the future and we can get them off our tax rolls. Happy to answer any questions. No, that's, I don't, that's a great update. I really don't have any questions. I think that... Uh, what I would ask, is there any heartburn in the um, idea of trying to sell or dispose of city-owned properties that don't have a tremendous, from my standpoint, a tremendous city purpose or use? No. Okay. No, I, I think it sounds like, I mean, I want to know more about it, but it sounds like good business. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Not for me. I mean, as long as we're sure, uh, ultimately, It'll come back and everybody will get a chance to look at them and say, you could put a something there, but not the city, right? Right. Might Ultimately, be ideal for a Dairy Queen, but the city's not going to go in the Dairy Queen business. Right. Uh, a lot of the, you know, a lot of what we own, the city ended up coming by because they went to share sale and were never sold. So the city had the opportunity to get them through forfeiture, and um, the city chose to do that. And we just have these various properties throughout the city that are here. That most of them are in the Blanche edition. And many of them aren't adjacent to each other. But ultimately, they'll have to come to council for authorization to go out and advertise, assuming that we, they have to be um, done through auction. And those have to come to council regardless. As I recall, the Blanche edition comes with its own unique problems. Correct. When it comes to lot size and uh, stuff like that. Yeah. So depth you know, of the, lot is the problem down in the Blanche edition on a lot of those. The what? The depth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. Does anybody else have anything else I on do. BJ's update? That was a great update. Oh, I have something else. Oh, sorry. No, no, I no. just want to make sure we we're good on. Anybody have anything else for BJ on his? No, I do. I have one other thing too, but go ahead, Suzanne. Um, <clears throat> fence at Veterans Green. We had discussed a long time ago when Mr. McIntyre, Jeremy came in, putting in the cannon. The fence is really small. Maybe what do you think a foot high? If that, and that includes the concrete foundation that it's stall installed in. They installed the fence into the concrete. So when I drove by, I was stunned to see, like in my mind, I thought it was, I guess I thought it, we made it clear that it was a safety precaution so that people wouldn't be on the cannon. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I went by and I saw the very tiny fence, I was confused. So I called BJ and I would like to know if they're going to put an, another fence around it that's taller. Um, Dan was at the cookie walk in line down the sidewalk of Veterans Green and there were kids standing on it, bent the fence, they were standing on the pavement. I just think even before the, um, the, you know, the cannon goes in, we've already got a problem with people in there. So I think it's a liability to the city if we've got kids climbing all over a cannon. So I just, I just don't know what to do. Well, and, and I'll say it wasn't only the cannon. The Vietnam Memorial that's down there, the sandstone rocks, kids were all over climbing it. Climbing jumping all over Climbing it. on it, jumping off of it, sitting on it. So we've got these monuments that are down there and um, have been moved there that aren't protected by anything. Granted, it's not often that it happens, but it certainly happens, and we see it now. So, you know, the, the Eagle Scout with the cannon does not, have the, does not have a plan to put an additional fence around it. Um, I would hate to see, you know, a cheap chain link fence to go around these things. I think if it, a fence does go around these, it has to be decorative. Um, the city owns, doesn't own the property. The city leases property, and the city's authorized to put these things there. The city moved the Vietnam Veterans Memorial there. Um, these are, I think, unintended consequences of having those things there, but it certainly is a liability to us if people are climbing on these things. Right. Um, um, you know, I, it, I assume that we can't... Um, assume that parents are going to keep their kids off these things. Um, yeah. These pictures I saw, the parents appeared to be standing right there right with there. them. The and kids are standing on Not the discouraging them. So I think we need to take a look at um, a way to potentially secure these so we don't end yeah. up with an it, issue. It was, it, it was bothersome. Like it was, um, we don't even have the cannon in place yet. But there were 300, 400 people down there at the cookie block, which was fantastic. But, you know, they're standing in line and their kids are playing. And, and, and Dan said that, you know, he did take a picture and send it to me that the, the fence is already bent. can be fixed, but it, it's not providing the purpose that we had intended for a fence to provide, uh, which was safety and liability issues. Is it bolted to the concrete? It is it's set, in, it's the in, concrete. set in the concrete. So it can't be. How would you even fix it? Well, my you hope was one around you'd have it. to put one around it. So it's only decorative. It's not... It doesn't serve another good. purpose. No, it wouldn't look good. Um, but it's not the only one. You know, the Vietnam Memorial that's down there also is an issue. With I don't think signs would do what we wanted. I mean, we could put, you know, please do not stand. I mean, you, something polite like you would at, like, a museum. Or, like, when I went to Williamsburg, there were all kinds of things that were. I just, I'm not taking my kids to Williamsburg when I go down to downtown Tascala. So there isn't the same type of respect given that you might see at a large historical <clears throat> site. And that's a good point about the respect. You know, these are things down there that are honoring our veterans, honoring, you know, it's the Veterans Memorial, and we've got people crawling all over them. Um, what I recommend we do, you know, first of all, the Vietnam one is the one that the city owns, the city moved there. So I think we're the ones responsible if we want to do something. Uh, what I recommend we do is um, the administration works to get costs to put fencing around these and see what the cost would be potentially move forward with doing that. I also know that the Chamber of Commerce has a Veterans Green uh, fund that may be able to help pay for some of it. So my okay. recommendation is take a look. Um, it's not going to be a tremendous amount of fencing that we're going to have to put around those. You're right, with the cannon, now that we've got the foundation of the fence around it, it may not look the best, but I think it's going to secure those. And I think that if we move forward with having additional um, monuments put down there, that we set the standard with this and say, hey, if you're going to do this, you also need to install this type of decorative fencing that's going to protect it. Yeah, and I think also that we should probably do a better job of 
looking at the plans for like if we it could have maybe of maybe even our committee we could have if he would have brought back his plans halfway through and we saw on the plans that the fence was only that high uh -huh. we could have said uh-uh yeah. and, and that was never shown on any that's the problem but i mean shown on any plan. what i'm I saying we is made it very clear in the though. future I thought oh, we made I agree. it very clear that we said that the we talked about the liability yeah, of it in Yeah. Maybe we could just make sure next time we kinda of learn from them and say at, at whatever park we put things at. Yeah, whatever yeah. park we put we require before they begin construction on whatever they have to come back and then we have to check it. That's a good point. Whatever park. Yeah. I think we come up with the standard and the spec of what we need to have as far as decorative protective fencing around it. So Tim, sure. That's great. Um, I would, uh, uh, first of all, as it relates to the howitzer, um, I think that we're not behind, too far behind the times or behind the eight ball with the fence that was put in. I agree with what everybody said. We wanted a fence to keep kids from climbing on the howitzer. That's not ultimately what we got, but I think what's there still won't look out of place with a secondary fence or something like that the other of thing the I same type yeah yeah and and that kind of leads into my real second point which was being a civil war aficionado and having visited i don't know 25 battlefields they they seem to get by with a classy looking almost military looking chain linked draped effect and the, and i don't know and that might be cheaper the point being that might be an option to look into something to start with yeah i mean uh, uh, that with signs on it now when you're in a when you're at gettysburg obviously uh, hopefully hopefully no place hopefully here not either you know, do you have kids jumping up and down on on war memorials um but with that said uh that might just also be an option that would that may be cheaper i'm not trying to to chintz right. on the buck but Ultimately, what we really want is not to have kids climbing on howitzers or disrespecting uh, people that have, have served or, or died in, in a war from Tasker. So whatever that takes. What we'll do is come up with costs and options and um, present those to the committee. Thank you. Just jotting that down. Yep, I've got it too. Um, does anybody have anything else on that? If not, I had one other thing I wanted to bring up and then we could – adjourn if nobody else has anything um i have had a couple residents uh come to me um and i thought it was a great idea but they've suggested um some type of a walking trail type map for downtown what i've what the general theme is is we didn't realize that downtown was this nice and we didn't realize there were so many neat things to do and where this came from was is people going to municipal park dropping their kids off for practice or the pool and they go walk and they've just said to me there's some really cool things in Batasco that I had no clue about is there a map so that's cool um I just thought you know I can't imagine it being a very expensive thing to maybe have maps that start at Veterans Green and or start at uh, Municipal Park that, you know, locate different, not just, I, I mean, businesses and also, you know, I guess <coughs> markers or interesting places or something <laughs> neat, whatever. Um, just put them in a box and people can take one and they can walk around town because they were very surprised on how how neat downtown really is once they were kind of forced to go down there so i and thought it might be something we we think about as buildings and grounds i think that's a great idea and maybe we get our high school or middle school kids involved in creating the map because they they're studying maps in third grade it's not going to be you don't want a third grader at this point i mean you might but we've had our when our third graders they've created maps of walking path in the side of the building so I know that at some point some of these high school kids are able to or required to study mm -hmm. mapping. So yeah. it might be something that we... I thought it was a great idea. I'd never even thought about it. A um, couple of things. I think it's a great idea. Um, it's something that I've kind of had in mind with the 310 trail also. 
is once you know that was approved as part of the budget and i'd like to see you know paths being designed through the downtown and i you know ultimately i'd like to see wayfinding markers down there to get people places but also with our gis capabilities now we'd be able to create some pretty neat maps highlighting different locate whether it's parks or businesses or whatever the museum veterans green yeah. uh, the school um, i think it's a great idea i think it's it's a really good idea we could advertise you know we could have printed copies we could have a you know advertise on facebook or website i think uh, it is like a on a cardboard like on yeah. a cardstock postcard available at veterans depot green. no <laughs> <laughs> this was way before that. <laughs> well, I think it would be yeah. well. No, I think it'd well, be good. Put them in all businesses. I know, like the library, businesses, veterans. Green. I think it's a great opportunity, and it, it's a way to highlight what we have in the downtown. You're right; it's a neat area, and you get people out walking around. I love it. I think it's a really good idea. You could put, you know, like at Veterans Green and Municipal Park. You could have like a take one, you know, where people could grab it and start there, whatever. But um, I think it's really cool. I, I, I'd like to see. Is that something that you could it. you could work on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll talk to the planning and zoning department with their GIS stuff and get it going. And I think what's important is, especially when we go forward with the 310 path, yeah. showing the path of how you use that. Because we've got the one that crosses Mill Street from High and goes across the creek and goes through the utility department. You know, if, you, if you're if you coming down 310, you may not know to go down there to pick that up. So uh, we'll certainly get to work on it and create it and Fine. start highlighting it. I think that's a great idea. Okay. I do. That's neat. Yeah, not my idea. That was brought up to me by three or four different people that I thought was, well, I better bring that up. I think it's great. That's great. So, who's, Timmy? Who's, who, uh, whose shop does that reside in? Is that is that uh, the administrator's job? Is that, where, where do we where do we kind of? I was just thinking, Grant, but I mean, because. I am just. I, I mean, I'm, who creates it? I'm just asking because I don't know. I don't know who, which, which one of our, which one of our places, I mean, is that. Sometimes we talk about about the trail off Taylor Road as being yeah, kind of par parks and rec. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, I think that creating a map of paths for down, you know, paths. When I say paths, ways to get around or routes, I'll call them through the downtown highlighting. I see that as a planning and zoning com uh, component, okay. especially since they have the ability with the GIS capabilities to create it. It, it might be cool too. It might be something to to make a little money off of, and if businesses want. I was just thinking that sponsorships. Want their name on the map they could potentially i know one that would probably be interested in that but, um even on the back like, already <laughs> yeah. even on the back like if yeah. the front had the map and yeah and on the back like a t-shirt you've got your information on the front like yeah. put all your sponsorships on the back yes Let's, um, you know, I think first step is creating the map, looking at yeah. the routes, seeing where we can go with it. And, you know, it's not just one route, but it's multiple routes right. through the downtown, how to get to different places. I think it's a great idea. Cool. And if I can blow it out, what I'd like to do even is not just the downtown, but expand it to um, Vine Street. You know, once you get to the library, that's not the end of your route. You can go north up and cross broad and go up Oak Meadow and go behind Rich Conine and get to Foundation Park, which has a trail around it, too. Yeah. So I'd like to look at it, not just in the downtown, but those larger areas, because you also have the library, you have Chase Bank, you have um, the Duke and Duchess shop, you have Foundation yeah. Park. So there's so much more to it. I think it's almost, you know, a map that we can show all of those and have routes. And what I would hope would happen is once people realize what these routes are, that you see people start to use them not only to get places, but uh, mapping out routes for walking for exercise. Yeah. Good idea. We'll get to work on it. Do you have anything there? No? That's a cool idea. Anything else? You good? I have nothing more. Suzanne, you good? I'm good. Move to adjourn. Second. Ready? Hayes? Yes. Hicken? Yes. Lee? 